Okay, looks like it is live. The last 60 or so days in China have had basically biblical types of different weather. There's been record rains, flooding, a crazy amount of flooding, waves of flooding that have potentially threatened the Three Gorges Dam from busting and the floodgates were opened. Um, in many cases, the local townspeople right below the dam were not warned, although it appears now that that policy may have changed now that it is leaking out to the west. There's also been, on top of the rains and flooding, there's also been locusts. Um, a river in China even turned, even turned red, although it wasn't with blood like in the Bible. It was actually like a chemical spill. So there's been an emerging food crisis developing in China. Kyle Bass tweeted out in the last couple of weeks that he said about 30%, maybe a third of China's food crops, their staple crops and their livestock have been destroyed. I've heard from my China sources that it's closer to 50%, perhaps even more. Um, I was told by a China troll on Twitter, and I don't know how he's tweeting from Shanghai, must have been Chinese Communist Party approved, that all of this is a lie, that all the stuff on China in focus YouTube channel from Joshua Phillip, who's an excellent investigative journalist, is a lie. And yet, here we go. On your screen there, there was a South China Morning Post article not a day or two later after this China troll was harassing me on Twitter about the locusts in southern China, the swarm of locusts um, ruining the crops and then moving up north. He called that a lie. And then here we have the South China Morning Post article about locust infestation. So China is importing record amounts of staple crops and food. Um, in terms of investment opportunities, I think the paper price manipulation on commodities futures contracts here in the US is going to prevent enormous moves with the paper price with commodity futures. But in the past, China has chosen to import more from Brazil, from Brazilian meat companies and Brazilian soybean and agricultural companies. China is also retaliating enormously against Australia. So Australia was the main country that suggested a independent investigation of the Wuhan labs. And there were other countries that joined and and in retaliation because anything that goes against the Chinese Communist Party is way is way over retaliated against um, when you had the Houston Rockets NBA the general manager of the Houston Rockets tweet out about something about Hong Kong the Chinese Communist Party retaliated and immediately canceled over a billion dollars I think in NBA contracts in China just for one tweet and when Australia suggested an independent investigation into the Wuhan labs, Ch the Chinese government then went on the retaliation path, and there's been a lot of retaliatory, very punitive tariffs, whether it's against Australian barley, some of the top Australian wine producers. I think there's even a boycott now of Australian cattle, I think, if I read in the last week or so. So... China has a lot of problems going on right now, and the stories going around in the last like 24, 48 hours is that China's going to dump all of their treasuries because they don't trust the U.S. government finances anymore, and that's not the real truth. That is a faking weakness. That is an art of war strategy, okay? That is saving face. The truth is that Joshua Phillip reported through internal Chinese Communist Party leaked reports and documents. And by the way, if you don't believe that, uh, you have NTD News, you have China in Focus, an excellent investigative journalist there. You have Joshua Phillip and you have Simone Gao getting whistleblower testimony. They have journalists on the ground in mainland China interviewing people, farmers in mainland China. There's video of lots of staple crops underwater, although some of, some of that flood has drained, but the crops are probably still ruined. And there's video of livestock being just absolutely washed away. But Joshua Phillip reported a couple days ago on his excellent China News YouTube channel that China's foreign exchange reserves, according to internal Chinese Communist Party documents, so these are documents that were in Mandarin, that were given by whistleblowers inside the Chinese government to Joshua Phillip and his other team of researchers and journalists, because there is a lot of leaks now coming out of China. They are going to NTD News. They are going to China in focus. You are getting better information there in a lot of cases from those YouTube channels now than a lot of financial professionals in the West know. And how do I know this? Because I've had conversations with mainstream financial professionals who don't know any of the stuff that I'm bringing up. They don't believe it. They don't know it. They believe something opposite. They're citing other sources. I've told them about China Focus YouTube channel, and they, they don't take a look at it at all. They say they will, and then they don't. 
So Joshua Philip was reporting recently, just in the last couple days, because the global economy is not functioning properly, that China's foreign exchange reserves on a net basis are down to $1 trillion at most and dwindling quickly. So if China needs to sell U.S. treasuries for dollars, that would probably be why. They need that cash. They need to go buy food. They need to stop a food crisis. They need to prevent civil unrest because there are lots of interviews on China in Focus, on NTD News, with actual people in China talking about the food prices the last seven or eight months going up like crazy, all kinds. Now, the food prices are not going up evenly. There's the Cantillon effect. And anytime there's currency devaluation and there's other factors involved, like which food, uh, which staple crops have been ruined more by the weather problems that I outlined. But the bottom line is that food prices in China are going up on an out of control basis. And many people in China do not have incomes right now. And the Chinese government is well aware of this. So I'll read a little bit more about the Locus article, and then I'll close out this short, this short little video. If you have a very difficult super chat question for $3 or $5, I probably have already answered it with an in-depth research article behind the paywall on my Patreon. And then YouTube won't take 40% of the super chat tip. They're actually taking even more than that with my ad revenues. They take even more than that. So the larger my channel grows, the more YouTube tries to take. But they do t take right off the top 40% of all Super Chat tips. So some of you like to ask very, very difficult questions that take 15, 20 minutes of thinking and you want on-the-spot answers, but I already have in-depth research articles. Some of them are five pages, 10 pages or more behind the paywall over my Patreon for only $5 a month. I think it's probably the best deal out there. So farmers in southern China have spoken of the devastation caused by one of the worst locust infestations in decades, seeing the impact was far worse than they could have imagined. This article came out on August 30th. So for weeks, the Chinese government was denying this. China In Focus YouTube channel had videos interviewed with farmers showing their crops on video of the locusts destroying them in southern China. And the Chinese government and the online China trolls were calling that a lie for weeks. So this is just proof that you can get the information ahead of some of the hedge fund managers and others. Now, trading it and profiting from it are two entirely different things because of the commodity paper price manipulation here in the West and how China decides to buy agriculture. Because like I said, they're choosing right now not to buy from Australia. I think Brazil's probably going to get more business. The European Union's probably going to get more purchases unless they've denied Huawei and 5G there. They're kicking them out. And I think they're even buying part of the U.S. Um, they started importing more of the U.S. to at least somewhat comply with the trade deal, but they're not going to fully comply with the phase one trade deal because they want to see the election results. Because if Joe Biden does win the election, and at this point, I think Trump is gaining momentum and it looks like Trump's probably going to win, but we'll see. But if Joe Biden does win, I mean, him and his son Hunter are both on the Chinese Communist Party payroll. So they know if Joe Biden wins, they know that the Chinese government's going to all the problems or at least a lot of the problems that the Chinese government has had with President Trump putting the punitive tariffs on them is probably going to go away once Joe Biden is in the White House or or his or uh, whoever takes over after Joe Biden, probably Kamala Harris pretty quickly. So, quote, on each corn plant, there were 30 to 40 locusts and very soon the leaves were all gone. Lin Yuchen, a villager from Pao. Pakwao in Yunnan province said the leaves on the bamboo trees in the mountains were also eaten up two to three days after the locusts arrived. When we walked by those trees, we could clearly hear the sounds of locusts eating the leaves, which were really scary. And some people said if nobody came to kill the insects, they might eat us up as well. According to the briefing issued by the Jiangcheng County government last month, the swarms of yellow spin bamboo locusts crossed the border in late June and have since made their way northwards. So this has been going on since June, and it's been denied and denied and denied by all levels of the Chinese government since. And only recently did you get this article out by the South China Morning Post a few days ago, about four days ago. But it's been denied and, and denied and denied for months. Meanwhile, uh, Xi, who it looks like he's going to copy Chairman Mao, he's turning himself into chairman, or at least he's moving along that process, although I thought he was emperor. Anyway, he is talking about people need to conserve food now. So that's, I guess, kind of a tacit admission.
of the food crisis in China. And globalization has benefited China more than any other country, in my opinion. It's allowed them to accumulate trillions of dollars in wealth, a lot of extra infrastructure, accumulate massive amounts of commodities and gold. So if globalization were to be drastically reduced or factories were to leave China, even if factories don't come back to the U.S., even if they just go to Mexico or Bangladesh or India or Vietnam or other countries, that would hurt China the most, in my opinion. So China has benefited the most, in my opinion, from globalization. But there is a massive amount of corruption in China. Xi is worth billions of dollars. Um, other Chinese Communist Party elites, the ruling families there, it's basically a dynasty of gangsters, about a dozen families and all their relatives. And they're worth hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. Uh, Bloomberg was going to run an article, Bloomberg News was, about Xi's brother, how he's worth over $400 million and he's a drunk and a womanizer, can't pay his gambling debts and addicted to hookers. And basically he's a total drunken idiot. And what happened was um, they threatened to cancel all of the billions of dollars in Bloomberg terminal orders and then the story was killed. So this, this story was gonna be released a handful of years ago, story was canceled. There's stories about over 70 Chinese billionaires in the last 20 years having mysterious deaths. And then um, the five unnamed people, all with the same address, who take, took over ownership of Alibaba. So lots of crazy things out of China, if you're not familiar. Meanwhile, there's tons of people in the gold and silver community still sending me messages that China's going to crash the dollar, China's going to win, China's going to dump their treasuries, their gold's going to go through the roof, they're going to get rich. Be very careful what you wish for. Because the social credit score might be coming here. I hope not, but unfortunately it looks like it. One more super chat before I wrap up the short little video. He says, uh, from Off Topic Reynard, thank you for the $10 super chat. I appreciate it. He says, hi, I love this channel. Anyone on the fence about Patreon for this channel, you should do it. Incredible info. Anyone you can recommend to help me invest in the market? Um, maybe we should talk about that later in terms, it depends what markets you're looking at because there are certain experts for oil and energy. There are certain experts I like more for that. There are certain experts I like more for gold and silver. There are certain global macro experts. Um, I'm starting to really not like a lot of Jim Rickard's analysis. I really don't. The last 18 months, Jeffrey Snyder's analysis has gotten off the rails. I was going to do a maybe an audio podcast about that for patrons because he was saying that the euro dollar market about 18 months ago was only 16 or 17 trillion and now he's quoting that it could be unlimited which is kind of ridiculous because it's limited the euro dollar market is limited by what assets you can buy so you go to the euro dollar market and you borrow from euro dollar or repo market to go buy other assets whether that's bonds currents leverage currency trades leverage bonds leveraged bond trades or leveraged derivative trades. So the euro dollar market and repo market are limited by the size of other asset markets. They are funding markets. I've talked about this in articles behind the paywall for my Patreon account contributors over the last five or six months. So it just depends off topic, Reynard, on what type of experts for what type of markets you're looking at. So for global macro, I really like Doug Noland. He's been in the hedge fund business for over 25 years. He he has the free newsletter Credit Bubble Bulletin, and he is an Austrian school economist. So he has hedge fund experience, he has Austrian School of Economics, and he's been a financial blogger as well, besides working in the hedge fund business for over 25 years. So Doug Nolan, Credit Bubble Bulletin would be a good one to follow for free for those of you out there. There was an absolutely superb interview on the McIlvaney Weekly Commentary with Doug Nolan in the last month or so. Last message here. Eric says, Eric Lambozo says, the dollar will die and the dollar should die. The U.S. is a bankrupt third world banana republic with hyperinflation riots in the streets, tyrannical governors and mayors and bread lines. There's a lot of truth to what you're saying, but all the other governments are also bankrupt. They're also trying to devalue their currencies even faster than the dollar. The entire system is a mess and all governments lie, cheat and steal. And the economic data is fake. So if you're rooting for China, buddy, be careful what you wish for. Because I don't think you're gonna you're gonna like the results. 
if you're rooting for the Chinese Communist Party, if you think they're going to be better than the U.S. government. Endgame. Endgame for now is they're trying to keep things in stagflate and tax and lie as long as possible. Even Jim Rickards is now saying there is no inflation. It, it, Jim Rickards wrote currency. If you read Currency Wars book, Jim Rickards talks about how the U.S. imports inflation, massive amounts of inflation, by other countries devaluing their currencies against the dollar. And now he's anti-inflation, which is really weird considering he wrote Currency Wars in that book, talking about how the inflation gets into the entire global economic system and the global supply chain. Yeah, Jim Rickards was on Twitter. He was on Twitter a few hours ago saying there's no inflation. Yeah, so I have a feeling, who knows what who knows um, what he's trying to sell on his newsletters or if he has another book coming out. I don't know why he flipped like that. It's weird. Because you have Warren Buffett and Ray Dalio now both making big, big inflation hedge investments. Warren Buffett's making big inflation hedge investments. He's getting natural gas exposure. He bought a small amount of gold mining stocks. I think he will add more. I'll talk about that on another show. And then Ray Dalio, I think, just closed out for Bridgewater. I think he just closed out a lot of his bond trades. He says that he, ex he does not expect bonds to be able to keep pace with currency debasement and inflation from different governments. A great reset. Who knows if we're going to have a great reset. Some of the people predicting resets like Bill Holter and Lynette Zhang, they're smart people, but they've been wrong a lot for the last 10 or 12 years. So will they eventually be right? Maybe. There's people like paying for super chats asking me about Lynette Zhang's opinion. She's a really smart lady. I respect her a lot. But some of her opinion, some of her predictions over the last like eight to ten years have not worked out very well. Same same thing with Bill Holter. I can't really talk about Bill Holter anymore because he'll write a nasty blog article with me and then send me emails calling me a liar. The the plan for now is stagflate and tax and lie, and all the governments are all advancing their government cryptocurrencies. That's for now. What will happen in the future, I don't know. But there's been so many rules changes in the last seven or eight months, it's insane. I wrote an article for patrons uh, a week or two ago predicting that evictions would be banned for rental property investors, and look what just happened in the last couple days. Evictions were banned. Look, track records are important for predictions, and I try not to make crazy predictions. I try to look at the stories and do analysis based on the stories. For now, the global elites prefer stagflate tax lie, where they're just screaming about deflation, they're devaluing their currency. Supposedly, there's negative inflation in Europe. Are your bills falling in Europe? Maybe temporarily your rent's falling. Are food prices falling? Are your portion sizes getting larger in Europe? Is the quality of your food improving in Europe? Because here in the US over the last 10 years, my food bill's up a lot, Healthcare bills up a lot and getting a lot less consumer staples when I shop at the normal stores every every week or two. And healthcare bills are um, uh, rent and healthcare up a lot. And that's not counted in the inflation data. So all the things you need to survive are not counted in the inflation data or not counted accurately. They're either not counted at all or not counted accurately. Mark says shrinkflation. Mark, there is both shrinkflation and stagflation. And there's bad substitution. People are getting less quality. Okay, well, that's it for the short little live stream show. The bottom line is there is a lot of evidence out there. If you go to the China in Focus YouTube channel, if you go to Joshua Phillips' YouTube channel on China News, there is a lot of leaked internal reports and documents from disgruntled and angry Chinese Communist Party officials that are handing journalists outside of China legit information, legit documents. So this is not propaganda anymore. These are legit whistleblowers, people handing good information, good intel to legit journalists, unlike many journalists here in the West who just report propaganda now, especially in the mainstream media. But China in focus, in my opinion, China in focus, their, their information is not perfect, but overall they are doing an absolutely superb job, especially for free. I mean, you can't beat that. You're getting better information in a lot of cases 
from Joshua Phillip and China in Focus and China Uncensored than then, um, mainstream the mainstream financial professionals are getting for their China news. That's the sad part. So China, if they do sell all of their U.S. treasuries, they are not selling all of their U.S. treasuries, in my opinion, to crash the dollar. They need that cash because the economy is not working well and they need to import food. Now, unfortunately, if you're an investor or trader, I don't think you're going to see big, big price increases in commodity price futures for agriculture here in the U.S. on the futures market because there is a ton of paper price manipulation. Although the income for net farmers, according to my friend Jeffrey Landsberg at Commodore Research, U.S. farm income is actually doing very well over the last couple of years, surprisingly, for large farmers. But I think that has more to do with President Trump giving large farmers enormous subsidies rather than commodity prices increasing. I think that has more to do with bailouts and President Trump handing large farmers enormous subsidies. Also at the state level too, I think I've heard that the state of Illinois hands out large subsidies too, and I'm sure other states do too. I know there's a big sugar subsidy and it's been on the books for over 100 years and they won't take it off because the sugar lobby here in the US is really powerful. So if you are looking to take, mm, so if, excuse me, so if you are looking to take advantage of the agricultural imports from China, I would look at Brazilian agriculture. So there's a Brazilian meat company. It's like JBA or JBS Meats. I've talked about them in the past, like when there was African swine flu early in 2019, that stock I think went up 3X or 4X. I haven't looked at it recently. And then there's Brazilian soybean farmers, um, not sure where else China would import, but right now Australia is on the naughty list because of the invest them asking for the independent investigation in the Wuhan labs about the coronavirus. So I do not expect Australian farmers, Australian ranchers to benefit from this, unfortunately.